This is the Crystal Chronicles, your Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia Podcast. Oh, it is 8 o'clock. With Crease, Mino, and Mark, bringing you all your Defo news and talk. Welcome to Season 3, The Chaos Era. Now let's start the show. Welcome, everyone. This is the Crystal Chronicles, your city of Final Fantasy Opera Omnia podcast. I am Mark, your host, and I am glad to have you with me as we uh, delve into episode number 101. Last week was our big 100th episode. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Thank you all for supporting us. The uh, overwhelming support was uh, just, just a lot of fun. Um, and just very touching, and so we thank you. Uh, tonight, uh, I am not joined by my regular co-host. Uh, as we live in this COVID-19 reality, of course, all of our fast food establishments are being overworked, uh, and so Mino is putting overtime in at the In-N-Out Burger tonight, but we are joined by our special guest, Drew Zane. Drew, how are you doing tonight? Very well, Narc. I'm um... Got a little butterflies in my stomach on this one, but I really appreciate that you put me on for this one today. Could you tell us a little bit about your Defo history and uh, perhaps why why specifically you're here this week? Oh, well, um, you know, I, I heard about this game uh, very shortly after the Beatrix release, and, like, Beatrix is my favorite. Like, I'm one of those unfortunate souls who... Uh, joined the game right after that so i had to wait you know 14 months to get her but like got it but um in the meantime um as porum was was running around i was looking at that kit um i really really like that kit um for a lot of reasons and uh i've been able to bring her all the way to the chaos right before her realization so i decided uh, um to talk to um talk to mark and say hey you know if you want any uh any feedback for uh for the podcast and uh and uh mark put me on and i was really surprised and i'm here well that's how that went welcome we're glad to have you i am also joined by my co-host and you know him and love him his name is crease how you doing crease i'm drinking for two tonight mino and myself (laughs) Well, that's better than the other options, I suppose. I'm also well, crossing my fingers my ticket luck cern- turns around because uh, it's been pretty bad lately. My gem luck's been okay, but I'm hoping to ticket Caius. So we'll oh see what God. happens. Okay, well, I just... So oh, go ahead. Chaos is... Sorry. Uh, Chaos has been pretty good for me, but I have I have one disaster, and that was... Um, I'm, you know how those those horror stories where someone drops like over 800 tickets and doesn't get the EX. Uh, that's how I was with, uh, with Ferris, but I yeah. eventually, I eventually gemmed her for, and I got it pretty cheap, but that worked out. Otherwise chaos has been pretty good. Well, if you're, when that happens. if your luck has been bad, perhaps you won one of our $25 giveaways. Uh, I have reached out to everyone who won a giveaway. If you, uh, if you won via Discord, I reached out to you on Discord. If you won via Twitch, I reached out to you uh, via Twitch. Uh, if you won on Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, YouTube, YouTube. Uh, so please uh, check those. Um, it, on YouTube, it's the comments. On Twitter, I messaged people. On Discord, I messaged people. On Twitch, I whispered. So uh, all of the winners have been chosen. Congratulations to all of you. Uh, I think the majority of them have already received the money. Uh, so it is nice <laughs> uh, that you can get that. And so I want to thank, uh, again, uh, Minyan, um, Anthony, and Cyrus for helping us give away all those gift cards along with all of our Twitch subs. And thank you for all the subs. Uh, we, um, yeah, J.A., you didn't get a message. Uh, well, there's probably a reason for that. <laughs> it, it's because you didn't win. Uh, sorry. Uh, but we do appreciate all the hard work you do for us on our mod team, J.A. So, uh, but thank you all. It, it was just a great event. I encourage you to go back and listen to episode 100 if you've missed it. Uh, it was just a lot of fun, and, and you all made that 
possible. So let's get to if I can find the outline. Let's get to the uh, let's get to the news of the day. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, all you have to do is uh, show up every week for a hundred weeks in a row, and then you can have episode one hundred, right? So we have uh, early May Chocobo panel missions. If you are looking for where to get those things uh, for the early May ones, I think there is a uh, one that's a little hard to get. Um, uh, but if you're trying to get them as soon as possible, you can go to DecidiaInfo.com. That is our friend Macknell's website. And he does these beautiful Chocobo mission panel guides that tells you where you can farm all of those monsters without waiting for the events. But generally speaking, the monsters that you have to farm are tied to events. So uh, usually if you just play the game, it's going to be fine or do co-op and it's going to be fine. There were some minor bug I fixes. I just shared oh. the link, sorry, for yeah. the Chocobo Choco board May 2020 uh, link. So the one that Macnel put together is currently in chat if you need to take a look at it. Otherwise, just go to decidiainfo.com. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, that leads us to Noel, or Noel, if you want to make him not French or, or about Christmas. Uh, Noel's costume is back with a gem bundle. We already did have him, but if you missed that before and you like a redder version of Noel, there you go. Um, you can Just have, for the clarification, you can have it is not currently live. It'll be live In as we record tonight. 53 minutes. It will be live. Uh, we need to go over our TCC challenge winners for blockade of the ancient mechs uh, from the call to arms. And of course, that's on decidiainfo.com, M A C M O L Macknell on Reddit. And uh, that, the call to arms, if you're not familiar, you submit videos to it. Uh, and then we make a TCC challenge, which limits certain characters for this chaos event. It was RNA, friend RNA, Lightning, Hope, Shadow, Zach, and Galif. So our winners, oh Jesus! There's 33. Uh, I I will I will read um, them. Drusane was one of them though. He brought Porum was. before <laughs> Porum was realized. Yes, apparently he, the only one who submitted for that. Which okay. So uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, no, um, he's pretty. Uh, he's she's pretty similar in hope, so it doesn't it doesn't surprise me that people just brought hope instead of Porum. Yes. So uh, so just. Congratulations to all who did it. I'll just read your names real quickly. GRW18, Big Al, Caraban, uh, Hebe, V for Veritas, Anthony, Picky, Mickey, Aodin Phoenix, Ganro, a lot of new faces, uh, Final Asim, Slide, Masalento with a, uh, oh, no Steiner, but Gilgamesh, Gilgamesh, Selfie, Gao, good run there. Oh, don't worry. He has another Steiner win up. Oh, up. okay. There's another one. Uh, Dreamy, Dissidia Clay, <laughs> Prince, uh, Dreamy's comp is, is crazy. By the way. Uh, Dreamy did Emperor Kate Sith X Death, uh, all three three. Uh, but yeah, that's a pretty. Uh, you had to work around a lot of things with that. Um, uh, Scott, um, Volt, Nick, Lord Leon, Infamous Element, Eroli, also Lele, Quetz, Ultima, Masalena with the Steiner Edge, Beatrix, Mammoth, Salta, Gotcha, Harrieth. Dystopia Swifty, KDG, Excalibur, Kane Highwind, I always like Kane's runs, uh, Chris5258, our friend and fellow streamer, CSAM, Yoshi Pasta, uh, Mammoth Salty does, uh, Gotcha does streaming too, um, CSAM, Red, another one from Volt, our friend Strafe, MZ Pro, Drew Zane did Porum, Vane, Beatrix, pre realization, our friend Amaterasu, and then V for Veritas, Lis Lizette did a three ingot run, Pinello, zero ingots, Warrior of Light, zero ingots, Leo, three, three, and Buddy, a newcomer, NC2TU, did a zero ingot run, Pinello zero, Sherlata zero, Leo zero. So uh, congratulations on all the TCC challenge winners. Uh, and uh, feel free to uh, submit your TCC challenges and let us know uh, how you might um, be interested in um, seeing them uh, more difficult, less difficult moving forward. Uh, we are always up for suggestions. 
Uh, that does bring us to the Mayfair campaign, which is ongoing. All kinds of fun things, including those free banners, which we did not spoil last week. Um, and uh, we want to remind you that, of course, every night get your free poll uh, because that will be gone the next day. Uh, and I think Mino already missed a few of them. So uh, make sure you log on and get that free poll every day. Hey, it might be some Power Stones at the very least. At least one, right? Uh, and there is that ongoing Gigantar co-op where uh, the gi may be gigantic co-op. You have to do that one time a day, every single day. And it does have a limited time token rewards. And I just, given the, the number of days we've had it and the number of days we will have it, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, you're not going to be able to get all of the rewards. So you're going to have to pick and choose which rewards you want. Uh, and I mean, for- That is correct, Mark. I think it, it's- you can get like 46 tokens or something like that throughout the whole period, which means if you want to get all ingots, both the weapon and armor ingots, you can get all of those and then have some left over for other items. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind. You have to do it at least once a day. You have to do it co-op. Well, aren't the, uh, the, the nugget, um, they are two it's tokens per one and there's 20 of each of them. So it's forty just for the the weapon uh, nuggets. Yes, forty for the oh, for the for the red ingot, and then you have a little bit of change. And yeah. I recommend uh, choosing a little mix between uh, tickets and weapon tokens, depending on which one you want. The yeah, there power there are, are actually overpriced. There are tickets. Um, so yeah, don't. There are uh, twenty tickets. They cost one token each. Uh, and yeah, if you are short on tickets and not like me, uh, you might want to pick those up. For me, in my house, we're going to get nuggets. All of the nuggets. I love nuggets. Yeah, and there's oh, bloom, yeah, no, that, blooms there that's too. So <laughs> The only one that really matters. Uh, and, you know, the power tokens are not particularly expensive if you're missing out on those uh, or if you're a, a newer player, too. But those nuggets are are good. And this is going to be kind of a common thing moving into Japan. Uh, they're going to have a ongoing daily kind of uh, cactar big cactar event that has a shop allocated with it and basically you only need to do one mission every day in japan to get all the rewards uh including the giant cactar and the and the tokens so uh this is kind of a, a foretaste of things to come if you will so uh expect more of this moving forward but be careful if you spend all of your um yeah i know if you if you you know down on armor tokens and you spend all your things in armor tokens and realize, oh, I, I really wanted those nuggets too, uh, you're going to be out of luck, friends. So um, I haven't spent any. going to probably hang on to them until the very end to give a sense of really what I need. All right, well... The let weapon nuggets are probably definitely the highest priority everyone should focus on, though. Yeah, um, between that and uh, the tickets depends, depending, but the power stones are... Little over expensive. There's a little bit of economy or a little bit of uh, pricing on that, but uh, weapon tokens are good. Tickets are good. I would say if you're ink welder, maybe armor tokens because he's out of those all the time. So, well, I mean, they're really good to dupe um, for 15s if you don't have the 15s, and then you can just get power stones that way. Yeah, no doubt. Well, that brings us to the one event that we've already had. We're going to talk about another event that's dropping as we uh, as we uh, speak. But for now, we did get a lost chapter, and that is Porum's lost chapter. She is a delightful little white mage uh, from the same village as everybody in in that uh, in that game. <laughs> uh, Yes, because uh, that's where Rydia is from too, right? Um, and her brother. No, first. she's from Mist. Oh, she's no. from Mist. Right, right. Um, yeah. Anyway, they're from yeah, Mist City. <laughs> so uh, it's fine. It's an old game. You don't need to remember everything. <laughs> I have played it in this century, but um, Porum got her EX realization. She already had her EX. Uh, no rework. And Yang got a rework, an EX, and an EX realization. Obviously very powerful. Uh, so Kreese is going to walk us through what they got, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about them. So Kreese, why don't you go ahead and start with the White Mage herself. Sure. Um, we're currently getting into an era where, as of the last Awakening Wave, every character is already level 70. 
uh, which means all lost chapter characters going forward are already level 70. They will not be getting anything new. In fact, reworks will tend to be fewer and far between for lost chapter characters. They might be less significant than they have been in the past. And in fact, in Porm's case, she gets no rework. Her kit does not change at all outside of what she gets with her EX realization. So let me just go through those key points on what she does now. Um, I'm not going to break it down based on ingot by ingot, but basic idea is that her healing from her EX white wave gets stronger. She gets some stat increases. She now batteries herself um, more before she does her HP attack. It deals splash damage. She gets access to uh, Brave++ plus plus and HP++, plus plus, and she starts with both of all of her buffs active. She also gets a new buff called White Arcana, which gives the party Brave Gain Overflow and also increases party healing from all sources. Um, her Brave++ plus plus and HP++ plus plus are basically the same as before, just slightly better. So HP++ plus plus has some Brave Gain based on her max Brave before dealing the HP attack. And the Brave++ plus plus has an extra Brave hit. But otherwise, her kit hasn't really changed much. She's still doing the same thing. Her EX is just a little better, and she has less of a startup time before she gets to full power. I do not have her kit. I, the, I think the only thing I have for her is her 15 CP, so I'm going to pass it immediately over to Drew Sane because he has a lot more experience with her than I do. Sure. Um, there is actually one uh, thing that did change in the base kit, uh, depending on whether or not you got um, two ingots in, in her. Um, otherwise, there is no kit, uh, change, but there is. Uh, a difference, and that is the white way. Or uh, sorry, the secrets of what's it called? White Arcana. They changed that. Um, the S two. Uh, sorry, the the brilliance, the the radiance, um, actually heals more because of White Arcana out of that. So you, normally it would be a fifty five uh, percent heal, and now it's sixty five percent heal in, uh, instead, which increases the brave gain you can get out of that too. So um, she does do a lot more brave healing um, in her base kit. But otherwise, yes, uh, there's no change to the base kit. Um, <clears throat> now, one of the things about, chain, uh, about the realization is that she starts with a kind of meta that other EX characters have now. So for example... Uh, lightning. Lightning has that thing now where you want to make sure to be in the right stance right before the EX. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, Porum now wants to make sure that she has um, battery stocked up right before her uh, EX ability because White Wave, um, depending on how many ingots you put in, can overflow quite a lot depending on how much uh, ingots you put into it. And um, going on the zero out of three ingots, um, you want to at least have uh, forty of your forty percent of your brave. But I've seen a lot of people recommend only zero out of three, which I don't recommend. There's going to be a reason that I'm going to be talking about that once I get to the two out of three. Um. But otherwise, there's a lot of minor changes on the zero out of three. But the actual, I think, the most major change is that the group cha uh, the group heal changes from thirty percent to uh, fifty percent, which is significantly much more, much better. Um, because one of the big problems using her with the base EX is that if there was enemies that were just constantly hitting you all the time, uh, thirty percent for a great group heal is not enough. Uh, fifty percent is much better. Um, the next ingot, a um, little more attack. That's good for launching, but the 50, uh, thirty percent for max brace is nice. So that's nice. Um, the new framed white arcana. Now this adds twenty percent gained overflow. It's only gained overflow. Um, it doesn't add stolen overflow, which incidentally is one of the more selfish parts of this kit change because normally she doesn't have much um, selfish parts of her kit. But here, um, unless you bring another battery character... Um, Doesn't that mean she'll pair well with someone like Xdef, though, who actually self-batteries himself quite a bit? 
Yes, in fact, um, I've been having a lot of fun um, putting uh, Selfie and Porum and X-Death in the same team and completely murdering it. But um, I, it's, it's an interesting little comp. But yes, yes, um, it does help with, um, it does help with uh, X-Death quite a bit. And there's not a lot of other characters that really take advantage of it, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, no, not, not having the stolen brave does kind of conflict because of her kit usually really being really good for stolen brave. Um, because of the defense down debuff and the attack auras. So, um, otherwise you get, uh, 10% of extra healing or recovery like i said you get a 60 65% of your healing from your uh radiance or brilliance instead of 55 a uh, group heal from uh, the group heal from the ex goes from 50% to 60% which is quite nice um it also gives an extra turn extension on the stack which is nice because hp attacks are quite good for her kit um and because of that also you have to raise uh, your max brave to like 60% um, before you do white wave so that you can get the most out of it. Um, but 3-3 three, three gives you the most bang for your buck for the offensive parts. And I really, really recommend 3 out of 3. And if you really, really can't, 2 out of 3 at, at, at the lowest. Um, this really addresses her offensive capabilities. The white wave overflow is going to go all the way up to uh, 170% with the framed buff. And so also the self battery goes from 80% to 90%. This means that you want to have 80% of your max brave right before the white wave attack for the best effectiveness. Um, because when you do that, you'll be able to cap and get more um, splash damage. And um, when you get that, uh, the numbers are going to make it so that uh, um, the party, the, the party members, the people you, with, you, with you, they can go from zero brave to 120% brave, meaning that after a white wave, the other two party members can just do a normal, regular attack and um, not have to actually worry about... Uh, turn uh, problems. And you also get the HP attack plus plus, which does 20% battery and then dumps. This is a big thing because there's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of times when Porm has no brave, unfortunately, and uh, sometimes you just want to be able to dump it. And the uh, HP attack plus plus is a lot better for it. But um, one of the reasons I want to really specifically because this is going to be talking about this month in general why Porum really really wants to have the um, overflow aura and really anyone who has an overflow aura should get the overflow aura is that I started noticing with Porum specifically because um, I try to bring her to every chaos is that I started hitting a wall on the Cerberus chaos I was not able to manage the, the damage to really, really hit the turn count, um, even with meta characters. So the overflow on White Wave really, really helps to fix that. But what I'm trying to say here is that without the overflow auras from Hope, from Rosa, from um, the characters coming up, you've got Ramza, you've got um, Aerith, and uh, plenty of others. Something that Square Enix, I think, is doing is not enjoying the fact that supports are able to be functional at zero out of, at zero out of three or one out of three. And so they're putting all these overflow auras at the back end of their EXs so that you have to invest all the way in there. And um, I think that's going to be very important moving forward. You need to be able to get their overflow auras. So that was just... Uh, Something I wanted to point out, just um, not to really, really 
make sure that you need the that you get the overflows that you need. I know that was a lot, so um, sorry to talk quite a bit, quite a lot about that. Not not a problem. Somebody needs to uh, give Porum some love here. So uh, you know, one of the issues that you know we we've noticed with Porum, and we've said I don't know if we said it last time around. You know, is that she is a I mean, she's a support character. Um, she's a good support character, but she is pure support. Like most of the other support characters are support with maybe a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of the other thing. Obviously, mm -hmm. Hope, we just got Hope. Hope is a pure support character who has damage mitigation and does AoE damage. So, I mean, he's one of our main AoE supports right now. Uh, which made him great for this last uh, chaos fight. Well, I would say that one of the things that um, is overshadowed, you know, a lot of people focus so much on the damage absorption, um, which is okay, but what really, really, really uh, makes her work for me or is part of the reason that she lasts so long is the fact that she has such a high attack aura and the defense down uh, debuff, which um, aside from Vanille's AoE uh, debuff, which is 80%, Porum has the strongest um, AoE defense uh, debuff at 60%. And that is how I've been able to actually test the numbers on like with, with Rosa, with Rosa between uh, Porum. Porum can actually facilitate her uh, team members to do more brave shaving than um, Rosa can. So that's one of the things that really, really makes Porum offensive, not by her own account, but because she lets her other party members do really, really, really high damage. I think that's fair. I Since Mito isn't here to be the uh, naysayer, I'll just point out a couple of things that I know he has complained about with Purim in the past, since he, I think he's the only one amongst the main co-hosts who has her full kit. She is very turn inefficient. She wastes a lot of turns when her turn comes up because she does so little on her own. She enables a lot, but her own turns tend to not be as impactful as what he has found in the past. Do you have any comments for that? Um, I think that it's, I think that the way that you should play with Porum is, um, I, I see a lot of people doing some things that I don't think is very efficient and efficiency is very important for making the kit work. I'm not saying that he's wrong, but I am saying that, um, when you use Mycidian's, uh, brilliance, for example, you want to put that on Porum, unless uh, you need it for an for a demer an emergency, and there's not a lot of times when you really really need it for the emergency. You use that on Porum to get the, the generic max brave buff, and then dump the HP. Um, you also don't need to use a lot of skills. If you can do the HP attack, then use the HP attack. The skills aren't really meant to be spammed. I know a lot of people like to spam skills, but um, I can usually finish the stage without using a lot of skills. The only thing you really need to do is maintain the defense down debuff, uh, maintain her auras, maintain the generic max brave uh, buff. Otherwise, you really, really don't need to be using skills. Just do HP attacks. Um, but I'm not saying that he's wrong. I'm just, but I am saying that there you, are you can ways say, to you make can it say a little he's more wrong. efficient. It's okay. Yeah, he's not on here to defend himself. So I, you can say he's wrong all you want. I would only call him wrong if he was here. <laughs> we'll we, say it for you then. Mino's wrong. Yeah, we tell him he's wrong all the time. It's good for him. He needs some uh, encouragement. So. Right. Any anything else? Um, obviously, you know we we talk about good supports all the time. Uh, Porum is a good support in this era. She has a very unique ability that the damage reduction ability. Uh, she does great healing. She does have great auras. 
Um, maybe a little bit different to play than a lot of the other supports, but any other kind of um, things that you've noticed playing her, like team ups that really work well, uh, people she pairs really well with, people she doesn't pair well with, anything like that, Drew Zane, you'd like uh, to share okay. before we move on? Yeah. Um, so actually, the EX doesn't change, the EX Plus doesn't actually change a lot of her cons. Um, the one big con is the group heal uh, doing better. And um, otherwise, not too much. She is really still not very good on strict turn count stages. Like, actually, yesterday, I went back and tried the Renoa LC um, with Porum, and I was able to get through it, but that was really because uh, Emperor is really good for it, not particularly because uh, um, because Porum was good for it. Um, no, actually, there's still some cons here. She's not good for strict turn count. Um, the HP absorption is still 70%, so enemies that drop like 70k brave damage is still going to kill you. Um, she is replaceable in defense down immune stages. Um, anything that says defense down is immune, I don't bring Porum into it. And also, um, the types of damagers that you really, really need with her is you need at least one, and this is just from my experience out of using quite a lot you need at least one of these you need a turn manipulator you need a launcher you need an aoe specialist or you need a, a character that does a lot of multi hp attacks per turn um, in order to hit the turn count but her strength still re remains she is an evergreen character this means that sh that um her lack of need to rely on brain sh brave shaving makes it so she can last more or less as long as you want her to be, as long as you have the damagers that fit well with her. Um, and also, outside of defense down immune stages, um, she is she doesn't have to deal with weapon or elemental resistance, and that means that she's opened up for a lot of stages. And also, of course, the uh, high attack aura and the high defense down opens the roster to quite a lot of older units. I've been able to bring older units um, much past their supposed shelf life, much more better than uh, than uh, other supports. So that's, uh, that's pretty much what I have to say. A couple of things I want to chime in for Purim before we move on is that she, in order to reach her full aura potential, you do need to farm artifacts for her. She's one of the... Uh, lucky and or unlucky depending on how you want to see it characters that has a crystal strength 50 that improves party stats by a percentage so you need to farm those if you want her to make your allies as strong as possible as drusane mentioned she is evergreen and she does have an advantage over some of the more recent meta supports we've seen in that her buffs only are on herself which means she's not hogging a lot of buff slots on other characters like hope and Pinello tend to do. So that is a, a plus in her favor too. She, The only thing she gives allies is a generic max brave up, which is garbage, and almost anyone who has a max brave up buff will have a better version, and the HP damage resist. So she isn't taking many buff slots on allies. She does provide a very nice defense down. While she does have Confuse, and Trusane didn't even mention it, it has a low appear uh proc chance which means it should not be depended upon it's not only it's not just that it's uh so so low but it actually can fuck up your plans because sometimes you want to um do an hp absorption when you know that there's going to be big hits from like three enemies but one fump gets confused so the 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 two turn uh absorption goes down and then you don't have the protection like i actually hate the confusion so I, if I could take that off, I would, really. <laughs> I mean, it, it's fun, but sometimes it can really fuck up your plans. To know. So moving from Porum to an older member of the Final Fantasy forecast, Yang. Mino was upset that I said Yang. Yang. I'm saying Yang. <laughs> so how, how is Yang Yang? Um, uh, <laughs> what, what did he get? He got a lot of stuff, didn't he? Grace, take us through. He got a rework that 
improved his kit substantially without really changing it, which is weird because he's one of those characters that has always had that problem where he was such an early character. He has the VV syndrome where only one of his abilities is actually an attack at the base form. It's been fixed with his rework, but it still has issues and he still has some quirks. So kick plus is now activated for eight turns after using his second ability focus. Um, he still deals 80% splash damage um, if it's kick plus. If it's only kick variant, it's 50% splash, uh, splash on, at, on other targets. Upside is that he has much stronger brave gain and uh, more brave hits on kick, so it will actually do stuff. Um, I don't think it overflows on its own. He needs his EX to get the overflow, which is a downside. Um, he's stuck with generic attack and max brave up buffs, very similar to VV from Focus. Upside with Focus is that it's not just a dead, wasting, wasteful turn to use. It does now have an AoE brave plus AoE HP hit associated with it that can overflow. Uh, he has his kick, his brave plus kick attacks, which does get better with EX realization. He does have an HP plus that does get better with EX realization. And he has a new EX ability that's on a slow recast that's basically very similar to his first ability kick, except it'll, um, the trigger for it doing. 80% splash to the 50% splash is just hitting a break a broken target or breaking a target. So just keep that in mind. He also gets a new buff from his EX called Wife's Encouragement, which drastically increases his attack and gives him that brave overflow gain that he really needs. And other than that, it's all in his realization. His realization improves his attack and max brave, makes it so that Twin Wing Frenzy can overflow more, has a much better potency increase. He starts with his buffs, he gets a faster recast speed, Twin Wing Frenzy gets more hits, his EX ability Twin Wing Frenzy, and he gets his plus plus versions of his Brave and HP attack. Which, the advantage of getting the plus version, the improved versions of his Brave plus and HP plus, is that they do extend the duration of his, uh, his EX buff, Wife's Encouragement, which means he can maintain that longer, which means he can do better damage because he's hitting harder with his the attack buff and he has better overflow thanks to that too i did not pull for him um i was never a big fan of y yang's kit even in his original game he's a very basic character in the sense that his kit's very simple he's like tifa except instead of being a single target king he's instead does a lot of aoe hp damage either through Splash or by dealing AoE Brave hits. And that seems to be his advantage. He's like an AoE version of Tifa that gives up the launch potential for the AoE HP potential. Um, I don't think either of you pulled for Yang either, but I'll let no, you two generally but... step in and say if you have any thoughts on him. He seems no. very simple. Sorry. Go ahead, Drew. Sorry. Um, no, actually... Um... I actually had the exact same um, kind of way of thinking when I looked at the kit long ago, and I'm like, it's kind of just Tifa, but they took out the delay and launch and instead uh, made him more of a AoE specialist. I do think that there is a lot of good in there um, that isn't really looked at, and that is that his... AoE is not split, it's splash, and sometimes that's bad um sometimes it's pretty good though because um for example there are um in a lot of encounters where you have three enemies where there's a main boss and then two of them are weaker and in encounters like that you don't really need to deal with um or rather it's nice to have the splash rather than the split damage so you can just focus on breaking the main care uh, the the main boss and then let the splash hit for the other weaker enemies. And one of the best things about that is Yang can actually keep up decent damage if you're only fighting one enemy because you're not like um, 
bringing in someone like Emperor who needs to rely on stealing a bunch of Brave but can't because um, um, because there's only one enemy there. So if there's encounters like uh, like the Renoa LC or like upcoming uh, Eldnarsh one where it's just one main boss and a bunch of of idiots, then uh, you don't you you can get away with just using the splash. So, but um, one of the things that is weak about the the Yang realization is that um, the only way to actually do a panic um, AOE break is of course your focus, but you don't want to waste your focus because that's uh, how you uh, maintain your ability to remain in chaos. So. Uh, Taz, thank you for the subscription. And uh, we're having a little battle between uh, Jin Lee and Vayne Novus to decide who's the best player in uh, Defo right now. Uh, I vote for Belial. The real question should be <laughs> who has the best. Yang and who is running him. Yeah, who's, who's going to bring Yang through <laughs> all of this uh, material? Yeah, he's, he is what he is, right? He's a, a melee AoE character. Uh, yeah. And we, we have a couple others. I mean, Squall kind of has a mixed kit of AoE single target. Um, Steiner comes to mind. We just got Steiner's Awakening or Steiner's uh, Realization. He he does that um, AOE damage with some debuffs right uh, in there in the midst. And Masolino has been using him really effectively. So, you know, I don't think he's going to be bad if you really like the character and you want to use him you're going to figure out how to use him but he doesn't he doesn't bring anything else to the table he is your damage dealer you got to build around him and have other characters but there's nothing wrong with a damage dealer and he does aoe damage so um no we we love uh vain novice and we love Jin lee but yes belial is the best player in defo right now so <laughs> and i mean correct me if i'm wrong but there's not there's very there's there's a lot more magic characters that can do aoe compared to physical yes yeah. mm -hmm. oh yeah well i mean we have you know obviously renoa um we have uh you know ultimisha we have emperor you know there is a lot of magic aoe the twins world of final fantasy twins you know there is a lot of magic aoe and, and that's just general I mean that's just kind of general role playing uh, JRPG. Your your wizards are the ones who are doing that AOE damage, right? Your your mages are doing AOE damages. Your physical fighters are tanking usually and and doing more straight up single target damage or uh, are are doing kind of good DPS by sneak attack, you know, other things like thieves and stuff. So I mean it makes sense. Uh, but you know there's a few um, AOE physical uh, damage dealers in the midst of that so let's go to the um let's go to the podcast polls oh uh, if i can find them here they are yes uh so on that uh podcast polls we had one person was going to pity two people were going or one person was going to use gems uh 20 three using tickets and 43 skipping that banner so uh, i think that tells you and, and i don't know that that's I, I mean i don't know that's anything against the banner uh, in that it's we're just in this era where there's a lot of good banners and we just came out of a triple ex banner that was amazing I'll with also a point very out good that a lot of people pulled for porum that wanted her when she yeah. first arrived and as we kind of commented yang isn't bad but he's not exciting either well we'll give you we'll give you a heads up on how many people pulled for yang um of the people who pulled for porum nine keeping it ex 16 um realizing it one keeping it at one book two keeping it at two uh two ingots and 16 realizations uh full realization so a handful of people with that ex yang on the other hand 18 keeping it ex three realiz realizing and uh yeah that is no one investing any ingots no one investing i, I just i don't think yeah, we've ever shame. i don't think we've ever had a character who no one was going to three three so if you did three three yang or yang or however you say his name um let us know because i don't think he's bad but certainly he is no i, I think that it, it is important to note that you know that 
it is splash, which does mean that you can get more out of it um, than split in in many cases. So I hope some people like it. Well, Mino, I expect to see your three three Yang next uh, next week. So you can tell us all about how that's been working out for you. Uh, we did have a chaos fight as this is a lost chapter and they have introduced the chaos fights. Um, this particular chaos fight was, if I can pull it up here. Oh, it this was per- a mean fight. It, um, it was a nasty Drusane, fight. Are you interested in giving us an overview of the fight or would you rather me or Mark cover it? I can do, no, I can do it. I just hope that I get it right. Um, so you have a bunch of, uh, well, it's a two-wave, uh, two-wave stage. The first stage, you have those old uh, wolves. I think they're lions stage, where you have um, a big wolf and then two other wolves. And um, not too difficult. Uh, they do have the stupid thing where they will protect their big one, which um, can cause problems when you're trying to attack the big one. But otherwise, um, not too big. The other one, the, the other stage is the three uh, horsemen, and um, their deal is that at the eighty percent and the fifty percent, uh, they're going to cleanse everything, and then after they oh, true, are you there? Might be having some lag. We might have lost. Drew Sane. Oh shit! Can you hear me? Yep, we, we can hear, hear you now. now. You just cut off when you were trying to explain the knights and what they did. Okay, sorry. Um, so the knights, they uh, whew. okay, they at eighty percent, they're going to uh, cleanse all their stuff, and at fifty percent, they're going to cleanse all their stuff again. The at eighty percent, I believe that they are debuff immune for it. I don't know if it's two or three turns, but it's one three. Of them. Yep, three turns. Three. Okay, and at 50%, they um, are going to cle- uh, cleanse for five turns, which yep. um, causes problems. Um, because Porum has a very good debuff, so I don't know why they decided to make it so <laughs> like half of that fight, um, the, def- the, de- the defense down is not available. However, <laughs> um, if if you as long as you can get past that, it's not too difficult. You can uh, most of the attacks that are actually dangerous are single target, so you can do a lot of things to protect yourself or to evade it. So, yeah, um, there. Are, otherwise, there are... it's not too dangerous. Go ahead, Chris. I was going to chime in on a couple of things that weren't mentioned. The meanest thing that I found out about the knights was that they substantially they try really hard to reduce your max HP as much as possible. When the wave starts, they reduce your max HP by a fixed percentage, and then they they apply a max HP down debuff, which they are immune to, so you can't steal it and throw it back at them. Um, I was thinking that some of my characters I was bringing to the fight were down to like six thousand max HP at a few points, which made it very easy for the bosses to come out of break take a like one brave gain and be in danger of killing someone if i wasn't careful uh that was what i found to be the biggest issue that and making sure i didn't kill them too individually so that they wouldn't the final one wouldn't buff like crazy at the end of the fight this is one of those fights where you have to at least kill the last two of them around the same time because they gain massive stat gains when there's only one left yeah, I timed it so they all hit it, uh, died at the same time. Um, what teams did you guys do? Yeah, there there are several ways to cheese this fight. <clears throat> so there are, there are many different ways you can kind of get around this boss mechanic. Uh, one of them is using a tank. Now, some of the tanks are going to be better than others. Galuf cheeses this completely. Uh, Edge, you can use strategically. Bosch absorbs the AoE attacks, AoE attacks really well. Um, uh, you can use Zach. Uh, you just have to time. Same with Bosch. You're gonna have to time the the um, locks, but you can use Zach and Bosch very effectively. Um, Gao is able to do that pretty effectively well with his uh, counterattack. 
Uh, Leon can cheese the fight with his enchant um, <clears throat> as well. You know, yeah, Shadow, if you reset a hundred times, <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can solo this. Uh, I think I saw a solo. <laughs> uh, but, you know, so so the counter, uh, Warrior of Light also, the counters, the tanks um, really do come in clinch here. Of course, you need a healer. So Porum, Porum is nice. Hope is nice. You know, there's a lot of different healers. But uh, the team I used, I used uh, Renoa. Because she does AOE damage, if you forgot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and right. I used Bosch and I used Hope because, of course, Hope is nice. um, Hope is a great AOE support. And so they all worked out. And my Bosch is not fully limit broke. My Bosch is 0 out of 3. Uh, my Renoa is 3 out of 3. And my Hope is 3 out of 3. Squex Joshua, how you doing? Glad to see you. Uh, he brought Gao with Kryle and Selfie. So that's a pretty good team. A lot of creative teams. Uh, Chris, what did you use? On my initial run, I tried a team with Gilgamesh, Pinello, and uh, Paladin Cecil. I had some trouble getting past the first wolf wave for some reason, and I don't know why. Maybe if I had tried resetting and uh, taking it a couple more times, I would have had better luck. But I decided to swap in Papa Limo for Gilgamesh on my second shot, and that ended up getting me through the fight. So my final team that I did for my complete was Papa Limo, Pinello and Paladin Cecil. Nice. And Drew Zane, what did you use to uh, take on this fight? Oh, I am having a massive blast with a team that I've been putting in through a lot of chaoses lately, which is uh, Porum, Selfie, and X Death. Yes, no breaks at all. <laughs> However, it's uh, it's working pretty well for me because it's all evergreen, and so I don't have to worry about. Uh, um, the defense is going up, et cetera. So I don't know. I'm going to see how far that goes. Awesome. Well, let's look to the call to arms. Again, uh, Macknell's call to arms. You can go to decidiainfo.com. You can go on Reddit. The uh, call to arms is available to everyone um, who... Uh, turn my volume off here. Uh, Mark, before we actually yes. talk about the... TCC challenge for this yeah. fight. I just want to comment on a couple of ways we pick out characters to ban for the TCC sure. challenge. And the way I've been doing it recently, since I've kind of taken over the role of choosing it initially, at least. What I usually do when I look at the TCC challenge, and or at least pick who I think should be banned for it, I look at who the most popular characters are, who are the ones that are the cruxes of teams that are not using specifically Aranea, and I see if there's any characters that are still left there in decently popular, but not like the tip-top popular, that might be carrying teams through. So for Porum's last chapter, I noticed immediately that Hope, Galuf, Selfie were all showing up. Hope and, and Selfie especially were showing up in a lot of team completes. So much so that they were outstripping Aranea in appearance rates. So I felt they should be banned. And then I noticed Rosa was the next most popular support, so I got her kicked out. And then the Galof was very popular. He shuts down these guys pretty well. He was knocked off the list. And finally, Ultimecia was the strongest DPS. That was not Yang. Yang. Actually, I don't think Yang shows up in any fights, even as even right now for this poor fight, despite the fact he's boosted and got a new fancy new EX. Sorry, Yang. Um, so basically, I picked characters based on their presence on the call to arms thread at the time which meant characters like Pinello and beatrix that are actually very good for this fight got through because their presence wasn't as high as other characters so that's the reason you'll see a pattern as mark mentions fights where Pinello becomes very common after the tcc challenge is announced um zach becomes much more common beatrix becomes more common edge becomes more common uh, Rem becomes more common too, so just keep that in mind. Did, was there was there a Palom one? Um, I I banned Palom because banned she's Palum. boosted. No, 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 P um, Palom, Palom, the oh, the boy. Palum. Oh, no, I mean poor. I'm sorry. Uh, I do not know if Palom was used much because he's actually. I, I've seen a video where he's actually pretty decent, but you also have to have his EX, which I think is only run once. I think. Um, looking... Yeah, the only person I know who has Palum's EX is a Roli. Mm. 
Looking at the call to arms, I don't see any Palom runs in the TCC challenge. <coughs> um, excuse me. Let me look at the total list. There is, so oh, going down, I don't see any Palom or Yang. That's in the entire T. Oh, yeah, no, there is Yang's. There's I think I saw, Yang. yeah, I think I saw yeah, a Yang a friend. Yangs. Um, so there are a few Yang. I see five yep. Yang complaints. Oh, nice. Yep. So yeah, I don't see uh, Palom though. Um, <laughs> yeah, and in there, I don't know why he wouldn't be uh, particularly usable in here. Uh, so thank you for all who uh, participated in the TCC challenge. Porum, Yang, Hope, Gallup, Selfie, Rosa, Altamisha, Aranea were band and the winners dystopia elfenod jealous shiro infamous element erolai strafe scott wtb riku slide final asim snoopball ph and you can check all these people out on youtube by the way uh ultima fuwa fuwa i don't know if that's how you say that uh nick the ninja G uh ganro grw18 dreamy KDG Dystopia Clay DD Rocks 13 Big L Hebe Lift Afreya Ink Welder used his Sabin Yuri Paladin Cecil team Caraban Ultima Hearts Nets 13 Harrieth uh, Clay again Masaleno with a Steiner Una Beatrix run and with a Gilgamesh Shadow Beatrix run. <coughs> Dreamy, Amaterasu, Prince, uh, Shorgan, Volt, Meow, Defo, Penelo, Lan, and Rain, and Papalamo, C Sam, List, Lizette, Teleute from the Tom Berry Troop, Yoshi Pasta, C Sam, Wired, Buddy, and Aodin, Phoenix with a one ingot investment, Ramza, Yuri with one ingot, and Leon. So good job, Aodin. I saw Aodin on the chat here earlier today. Uh, and thank you all for playing <laughs> the TCC challenge. So well, how, there is uh, one okay. person in chat asking what the TCC challenge is. So let me just quickly give you a breakdown on what it what is. is it? Basically, Macknall, one of our moderators here in chat and on our Discord, is actually much bigger than us in many ways. He runs a uh, a a uh, site now called DecidiaInfo.com, and on that site, one of the major things that he does collect is information about players' completes on Chaos Fights, with the interest of collating, seeing who's being used, who is not being used, and trying to figure out who is strongest, whether it be because people pulled for that character, built that character, or using that character, or because they work for a specific fight. And so what what the TCC podcast host decided to do is when Beatrix was around, we saw, well, Beatrix is a little too strong. She kind of cheeses a lot of fights. And then we got cases where the launch meadow was king and all that stuff. And we said, well, how will people do if we kick out those most popular characters? Can they still do this without using the tip top meta characters for any fight? So the TCC challenge takes asks players to try to beat the stage without using certain characters, depending on usually popularity and meta status at the time. So for example, for this fight, we banned Porum Yang because they were boosted, Hope Gallif because they're new and very shiny and very strong, Sulfi Rosa because they're strong supports for this fight, Ultimecia because she was by far the strongest damage dealer before we banned her, and Aranea because she's global first and really strong. Um, and that's the idea behind it. What our goal is, is to try to increase diversity in teams that are submitted to the call to arms and also to get people to be creative in who they use. Uh, Mark, do you want anything to that? You think I did a good job there? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And I think, right, that is, um, you know, that's been our intention uh, just to add another layer of kind of fun and opportunity to the game for those of us who have been playing a while. And if, if you're uh, newer, yes, Lise is so strong. Uh, and she still pops up in all of She's these events. She's stronger than I gave her credit for. Uh, she still ago. pops up in these events. So God bless you. And, <laughs> and we're waiting. I, I say, you know, um, you, you can't pull on every character. 
uh, unless you pay a lot of money. Um, but I mean, you, you don't have every character. We don't have hands-on experience. That's why we have, you know, three normal co-hosts and we bring on other guests like Drew Zane to make sure that we have some other input with characters maybe that we don't have um, reality with or use with, uh, practical use with. Uh, but, you know, you're going to probably figure out a way to make those characters that are garbage really good. Although I haven't seen NVIDIA jump up into my Ash challenge. So I'm still holding <laughs> that she's garbage. So prove me wrong. I like to see those TCC challenges with Ash. Uh, give her some love. She needs it. And Yang. I'm really the, where's the Yang? Yang gang. Yang gang. Pronounce uh, Yang yes, gong. correctly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, as of just right now, we got a new event with a new character that a lot of people are probably skipping on because they have no idea what he does or even what <laughs> game he's from. And that is Caius. And uh, I don't forget what the event's called. Some dude from the future gets angry at other people from not having things. <laughs> I, I didn't. The forest here. I didn't. I didn't play. I didn't play those sequels. I so also did not. I I played one Final Fantasy thirteen game that was plenty, plenty of Final Fantasy thirteen for me. But uh, I know there's a lot of uh, Noel, uh, Sarah love uh, in in the uh, Final Fantasy world, and um, some people like Caius too, including our good friend Eons, um, and she does uh, videos as well and streams. So uh, she was big in Japan, got Caius and used him very effectively. So. I think we're going to start with Noel, though. He gets an EX realization. Kreese, tell us about Noel, and uh, we'll start from there. I I wanted to start with Noel mostly because his changes are so minimal that it's pretty simple to talk about him. He only got an EX realization. He was a late Cosmos character, and he also got a broken EX weapon. It had It was over-budgeted for attack stats, which means that Square Enix did not really buff up his attack stats much on his EX weapon, or his EX+. Plus. Um, if you realize him, what he gets is the ability to increase his Brave Overflow on all abilities when he has his EX buff Will to Seize the Future active. A small max Brave gain, he starts with his buffs already on him. He doesn't need to do that. And he gets access to a stronger version of his Brave Plus called Fear Siphon Plus, which now has a brave, uh, a, sorry, a gravity aspect, and also has more brave hits. And if he breaks the target, well, um, it becomes instant turn instead of just high turn rate. So he can immediately use his free skill use. The big things for Noel, the design of his kit is that he gets a lot stronger when he is attacking targets that are already broken. All of his abilities turn into plus versions if he's targeting an enemy that's already broken, including his HP+. Plus. Mostly what this does is that it causes a potency increase and also an overflow increase on abilities. He needs to maintain a buff called Last Hunter, which he gets primarily from his second ability, Gale Fang. However, he can extend it and increase the stacks with his first ability, Tempest Strike. Uh, one of the big problems Noel has had is that Tempest Strike is tied to two elements, ice and wind, and he does not imperil either, which means he has to rely either on others to imperil those stats for him, or he has to hope to God that uh, enemies are not immune or absorbing either of them to deal real damage. But if all things work in his favor, his basic design is that he deals a lot of damage on his turns, and he's just really strong in general. He's a pretty strong single target attacker. If he gets the opportunity to break someone with Fear Siphon Plus, he gets free skill uses to extend his uh, combat longevity. He can shave very strong thanks to Fear Siphon Plus having a gravity hit and his additional ability Shave Slash having a gravity hit associated with it. And in general, that's his basic design. He only deals a AoE HP damage on his... EX ability, Meteor Javelin, it's splash damage. Big advantage of his EX ability is that it ignores defense, so he doesn't really care what the enemy's defenses are when he's using his EX ability. That is not true for the rest of his kit, so keep that in mind. Um, generally, Noel is a pretty strong character. Um, he does have some strengths, but he's not like an amazing person anymore anymore. He's kind of had his era... Despite that, he will work if you 
build around him. He does have some small party auras. He improves attack slightly, improves max break by a moderate amount, and he improves speed slightly for the party. So he does have some party utility, but it's nowhere near as substantial as like a true support character. I think his kit's cool. I liked using him a lot in late Cosmos, and I had to I kind of stopped using him once Chaos came around, but he does have some advantages. I think the big problem he has is that Fear Siphon Plus is not a free turn. It still consumes consumes a turn even if he gets the break there. So you have to keep that in mind. He can burn a lot of turns very fast if he's using Fear Siphon Plus a lot. So, so you need to either think of a way to save turns and be careful. Um, I think that's everything I have to say about Null off the top of my head, but uh, Mark, you're saying, do you have anything to say? Yeah, you know, Noel has this uh, quirk where <clears throat> his EX weapon gave him a lot of attack, more attack than anybody else in the game. So I think he's still in Japan, has the highest attack in the game, uh, the highest base attack. Uh, so he's always been real potent and always done what he does well. You know, I, I think the problem here for the next couple months is... You know, there's just a lot of characters that do. I mean, we're, you know, you're talking about rebreaking and and free turns. Well, we we just had lightning, and before that, we had, you know, Vayne, and we have Aranea, and you know, we have a lot of other characters that kind of do some of the stuff that he does in terms of just being a um, physical attack type powerhouse. Um, but that doesn't mean he does it bad he just there's just a lot more competition than he had back in cosmos era you know in cosmos era it was kind of noctis and then noel and you know they were the two doing the big damage in terms of this uh you know noctis did some um range damage but in terms of the physical damage <clears throat> now noel is in a much more saturated field so i think he he just deals with that and again he's getting a realization as opposed to being a new character as opposed to getting a new act new ex and i think generally moving forward at the at the for the rest of chaos the characters who are the new characters the characters that get the new exes with the exception of the last banner that was just the complete opposite of course poram kind of had the better realization and yang was the new, uh the new ex uh but they're they're the new characters the new exes are going to be a little bit more stacked a little bit more powerful than the existing character realizations not always the case uh but sometimes so if you like noel uh you're going to find good use for him um if not you're going to skip him and not worry about him whatsoever i skipped him in cosmos i did not think he was a necessary um you know, he was hyped big in Cosmos. I did not think he was necessary at all in Cosmos. We had a lot of powerful characters in Cosmos. Uh, you know, Vayne and Noctis particularly. We we had were able to use them in Beatrix. We got uh, in that era as well, in the Lady X era. Um, so, but yeah, late Cosmos, we had Vayne and Noctis. And so Noel, Noel was just kind of icing on the cake. Uh, and, and he was easily skippable, although he, he did last in chaos, uh, you know, a little bit, a month or two. So, Juzane, any thoughts on Noel? I, I know I think you said that he's the one that you had kind of the least uh, experience with. Well, I think it's just unfortunate um, the way how it turned out, how, how he had um, that bugged extra attack. And so, you know, it was... Um, countered by having a bunch of stages that you know in early chaos um made it so you couldn't use null and now that they're brent taking that out and letting null be able to be available on a lot of stages you know we already have null so a lot of characters who already pulled on null or didn't plan on pulling null aren't going to change their mind just because of this realization so what I'm trying to say here is that because there weren't a lot of changes and he didn't need changes, it's just kind of a matter where where it's like, if you had the character, then you already have the character. If, otherwise, this wasn't going to change your mind to get him because there's other characters that are much more um, uh, pretty to look at later. So yeah, otherwise, that's all I have to say. But if you're looking to pad no. your banner with some some other guys, yeah, go ahead, Chris. Noel's one of those characters that he has his advantages. He has the unbreak rebreak 
mechanic with Tempest Strike. He does have the he does have some strengths. He does have the ability to get some free ability uses if you position him right. He does bring minor party auras, which are nowhere near as amazing as they used to be when he was in Cosmos, because it's much more common for offensive characters to have party auras now. He does a decent amount. He still has some advantages. He still can ignore defense on his EX ability. So he's not bad. Oh. He's not ama- He's not as godly amazing as he was in late Cosmos, however. And I think that's what we can say about him that relatively is... solidly. He's in a nice middle spot now. There, That is... um. Right, the, uh, the the ignored defense. Is that something that we want to tight, uh, slightly touch on for future or no? How the uh, the way that the defense changes in the future or no? We've talked about it a little bit, but why don't you remind us on what that is, Drew Sane, if you well, can't tell, talk about it. I'm, I'm not going to say that I know very very well how this works but i do know that one of the things that's going to come up is that um in lieu of enemy defenses rising what's going to start happening is that they're going to go really really hard on brave reduction um as the enemies uh uh, as the enemies get lower in health they're going to start getting brave reduction and so Characters who are getting um, ignored defense aren't really going to get as much effort uh, effect out of it because um, defense ig- uh, ignoring defense isn't that important um, to the kit as much as it was before. Yeah, it's not going to be as useful as it used to be. Uh, I mean, it's still going to be useful on the first how many over tiers of dimension ten, but. Um... Uh, but yeah, moving forward in some of those fights, it's it's not going to be useful at all. So, yeah. Yeah, so all those uh, ignore. Yeah, Ryoshi Pasta says Rip Shadow. Yeah, well, he can still dodge 70%, so you can keep resetting until you, until you beat it. <laughs> all right, Chris, do you want to talk about the new character? Uh, his name is Caius. Caius He's Ballard. Got a yes. Suit. I will talk about him at length while I pull for him with tickets. Nice. Um, so Caius is a new character. He kind of fills a niche of being a combined melee attacker debuffer, with his debuff niche being a little different from other debuffers in that all of his debuffs are framed debuffs. They're not particularly potent or anything amazing on their own, but the fact that they're framed and harder to for the enemy push-off does give them some advantages. So let me go through his kit quickly. He has a couple of mechanics uh, that define how he is. First thing is that he has a special passive aura called Heart of Chaos that gives him a small increase to attack and max brave while it's active. It's active from the beginning of the ga- of the fight onwards. It will also protect him from one death. If he would drop below one HP, he will be protected from dying and recover to full HP. Downside is that he loses Heart, loses heart of Chaos, So he has a last stand that's a one-time only last stand. That also provides a small attack and max brave boost to him while it's active. Second thing is his body and soul stackable buff that he has. It can stack up to five times. He gains it from both of his abilities. All of his abilities, sorry. He gets it from his EX2. Um, And it gives him HP regen and brave regen based on stacks. So... Because it stacks so much, he can get up to 250% of his Imp Brave regen per turn once it's fully stacked up to Body and Soul 5. Uh, Third thing he does is that he has a special frame debuff along with his generic ones called Doom Chaos. Doom Chaos is unique in that it kind of works like the Doom that we've seen a couple of enemies give us. Once it expires, it will force the target to become broken. Regardless on their brave value, regardless on their status, they will be broken. So Caius has this new niche where he will break a target guaranteed once you set it up. They will not avoid it unless they are immune to all debuffs. Um, Downsides for Caius... Oh, sorry, I haven't finished going through his full kit. He's 
he's a mixture of single target and AoE damage. His first ability, Pulsar Burst, is single target. His second ability and EX ability are both AoE attacks. They deal splash damage on Eye of Bahamut and split damage on Inferno, his EX ability. His EX ability also can trigger a launch attack, which is nice. He has some launches, but it's nowhere near as frequent as other characters. It's just a every once in a while thing, since it's on a slow minus recast speed. He gets access to improved Brave and HP abilities based on his body and soul stacks. In order to get the better versions, he has to get to above three stacks of body and soul, and you should try to maintain that as much as possible. His additional ability allows him to inflict Doom Chaos along with his second ability. Advantage of using the additional ability is that it has a one-turn duration, so you will be certain it will uh, break the target on next turn. If you use his second ability, I have Bahamut, it has a two-turn duration, so you have to plan ahead if you want to use that to break targets. Just keep that in mind. Finally, his realization improves his EX ability as you would expect. It makes his Brave++ plus plus and HP++ plus plus abilities better, and also makes it so that they will increase his body and soul stacks through the use of them. So he does not rely on his abilities to build them up anymore. He, it does not refresh the duration of the buffs, it just increases the number of stacks, so keep that in mind. And finally, if you fully realize him, his EX ability also delays targets along with triggering the launch. I think that's it. Caius is kind of a weird kit. He's very offensively focused. He has crazy brave regen. He can regen more than I think just about any character can at this point in the game. So he doesn't really care much about the enemy's defenses. He will just do an HP attack plus plus and still do a massive amount of HP damage just because of how much he's regening turn by turn. So keep that in mind. Downsides is that he's very selfish. He doesn't provide any bonuses for his allies. Everything he does is for himself. Outside of his generic frame buffs, which reduce max brave, defense slightly, and uh, put a poison effect on. He does have the niche where he can force breaks, regardless on the enemy's defense. They have to be planned around. You cannot always anticipate them perfectly. And he's one of his biggest weaknesses is that he's really restricted by his ability uses. He has 14 total ability uses between ability 1 and ability 2. He does not gain any ability refreshes or free ability uses. So you need to partition them out carefully. You need to make sure you maintain your buffs as best as possible. And I think that's one of his major issues. That and the fact is Last Stand's only a one-time thing, where other characters, their Last Stand is conditional upon their current HP value. So keep that in mind, too. Ideally, Caius should never be killed, because he has a massive HP regen on himself, and he loses stats if he gets killed once. So keep that in mind. You don't want to burn out body and soul. It's more like a last-ditch effort to keep the fight going for him to trigger that. So he's an interesting character. I think he's going to fall into a similar niche as Noel, where he he has his advantages, but he is not like an amazing character. He definitely will work if you want him to, but don't rely on him to carry you through all fights necessarily, especially because he's so de dependent on his debuffs to really assist the team and to get those breaks when he wants to. From my understanding, his Brave Plus and HP Plus potencies are not particularly great to compensate for his massive Brave regen, so keep that in mind. I, th I think I need to take a breather now, so I'm going to let Mark uh, comment from here, and then we'll yeah. pass it over to Drew Sane. Yeah, I uh, want to shout out to uh, Resfoina, who is a fellow content creator on YouTube and Twitch. Check out her great stuff. Uh, let us know, Res, if you uh, pulled for Caius. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it, you know, it's one of these characters that I'd be interested in and I might throw some more tickets at it anyway. Um, just to, uh, <laughs> you know, just cause he's just a, he, he's a character that so many people skipped over, does weird things. Uh, Aeonis, the winged eons, uh, you know, she used him really well and, and has a lot of information about him, but, um, you know, he, 
Chris talked about the the lack of ability uses. The slow charging EX is an issue. He does give four frame debuffs, um, and uh, you know that can be a problem with some other debuffers. He doesn't really add anything to the party besides his damage. Um, so, but yeah, he he's kind of an interesting character, even though he's kind of basically a straight damage dealer in that he does his damage in a roundabout way, just like X Death, right? Uh, X Death is kind of the same thing. He's not kind of a straightforward damage dealer, and so I I kind of like that. I mean, I just kind of like the the interesting kind of uh, off the wall kits like X Death and uh, um, Karen, and uh, you know, so yeah. Um, yeah, Drew Zane, any uh, any thoughts about um, yeah? Kai, uh, uh, Eons is saying Caius needs to be three three. Noel is fine at zero three. Thank you for that. That's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. Caius really does benefit substantially from getting all those uh, mm -hmm. ingots invested in him. He yeah. just gets better stats. He gets a better EX ability. He gets um, improved Brave++, plus plus, HP++. Plus plus. He starts with his bus, which he really needs because he is dependent on getting those bus built up. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I don't even... Uh, I don't even remember that character's real name, though, that I purpled that dreamy made me purple, Karen. Um, Karen? I, I can't even say. No, I, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, Karen, yes. Um, but, um, yeah, no, Noel is, you know, a 0-3 option and, and great on, you know, if you need to throw somebody in uh, Dimensions End. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you have them, why not? Uh, Drusane, any thoughts on Caius? Yeah, um, having not played him. Uh, the good thing about the fact that I'm just a guest means that I can say things that I think are good that aren't good, and uh, maybe people will uh, forgive me. <laughs> but actually, when I was looking at it, um, I do like that he is able to build stacks really quickly and is able to maintain it because his skills um, are able to uh, maintain the the stacks. And the looking on the paper, it looked like the uh, improved skills are pretty decent. I didn't know that the HP attack was low potency. Um, otherwise, I was one of the things I was looking at was like that a three brave HP hit is is not awful because we usually see uh, two. Um, I think it would have been nice if the HP attack gave a stack of body and soul, um, but it, it doesn't. Does if oh, you does? Uh, realize his weapon? It's not shown on the. Uh, the infographic because it is tied to booking him. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that that makes it a lot uh, a lot more uh, refreshing. Got it. And um, I personally want to disagree about the um the the frame debuffs a little being uh, unimpressive. Um, if they are thirty percent defense down and M brave down, that seems. I mean, it's not particularly great, but. Normally, when I see uh, framed debuffs, it's like ten percent or twenty percent. Right. Um, so that's I think fair, that... but he does it across three different debuffs: the yeah, poison yeah. defense down and max down, max brave down, which means he doesn't leave much room for other debuffs, which can be a boon or a curse depending on how buff heavy your target is. If they like to throw their own buffs on then Caius will be great for shoving those debuffs or those buffs off because he's just forcing debuff slots to be occupied. The downside is that if they don't like to buff themselves, then he's stealing buff slot or debuff slots from other targets or other characters that like to debuff as well. Yeah, that's a good point because, yeah, normally those things are baked into one debuff, so that's a good point. Um, it, let's see. Despite the fact that you don't want to spam um, Eye of Bahamut, it's actually, I think, really nice to be able to have a 100% brave kill on demand on a skill. It's pretty unique, you know, otherwise you uh, usually are relying on an EX charge. Um, being able to know that in two turns there's going to be this thing you can just snap and just uh, be able to have that on demand is uh, pretty nice. The problem with that is, of course, the same way with X Death, you can't spam it, so it's kind of problematic. Um, but having that on demand, I think, is uh, pretty interesting. The Brave Regen is uh, very strong. It makes it so um, he 
can fit in some co uh, party comps that are not very effective on battery. But uh, otherwise, I might want. I still might want to have a battery for him because those skills have very high overflow. Um, but yeah, I agree that one of the big disadvantages is what the heck were they thinking with um, losing Heart of Chaos and not being able to get it back? Um, and also, I think that the launch battery is pretty meh. It's like a twenty percent. Uh, yeah, twenty percent. Uh, uh, max bra uh, twenty percent brave in it, which is uh, kind of pathetic, and it's actually kind of d depressing knowing that Kais is going to show up in like a little over a month and do so much better on that. Um, but I do think that in global, a lot of people who um, I'm going to be expecting that a lot of people who are really really expert players at this are going to be able to study boss patterns and heavily exploit Doom um, much better than I could, anyway. So, that's my take on Caius. Well, as Kreis just pulled him, I uh, expect that that will be Kreis's work, and I expect the How to Play Caius video collaboration with Ionis uh, real quick. So, uh, so how, how many tickets did it cost you, Kreis? Somewhere around 150, which is oh, much better bad. than my luck recently. So definitely a plus. Uh, we don't. Um, we, we just got this event, so we're not going to cover the chaos fight. Uh, Magna will put up a guide to the fight. Um, him and Scott and a couple other po folks have been working on that. Dissidiainfo.com. Uh, he will also post the call to arms here within a day, and we will post the TCC challenge. So uh, join our Discord or check Reddit, and we'll uh, be able to tell you what the TCC challenge is. I can tell you that RNA, friend RNA, Caius, Noel, and who else is Synergy on this banner? Lise? Or who is the third person on this banner? No one's answering me. Oh, um, <laughs> I don't oh, know. Shoot. Who the third Kaya's, person it's it's least yeah uh so they'll probably be um banned but uh let's go to the podcast polls well before we transition here and it looks as if on the podcast polls uh one person was willing to pity this banner two people were willing to use gems 25 tickets and 45 skipping of course a lot of people have no of the people who were planning to get caius or who have caius uh, 7, keeping him EX, 12, keeping him realized, uh, and 4, fully realizing him, uh, of the people who had Knowles EX. Uh, 10, keeping it EX, 22, keeping it realized, 1, using 2 ingots, and 4, using full realization. So that's what everybody else is doing. Don't let that impact what you do. Uh, that's just for your information. You do whatever you want to do. And if you like these, I'll, yes. I'll just echo Finally. that I, I've been trying to not overhype Caius, even though I'm polling for him, because the general consensus is that he is just one of those solid middle of the road characters. He's not going to blow anyone's, he's not going to blow anyone away. He's going to do what he does well, but he can be shut down. So be careful of that. And he does have issues. The turn or the ability count is a massive one, so be careful. You cannot spam with him. Well, that moves us to another new thing we got. We did get another free banner, so make sure that you uh, have the free banner and the free banner tonight for the next three nights. Uh, recording this on the seventh of May uh, here in the United States. Uh, the free banner is Golbez, Ico. And uh, Deuce. Golbez and Deuce, yeah. Yeah, Deuce 3515, but Golbez EX, Ico EX. So, uh, you know, again, if you're filling out your roster, uh, not not a bad banner, but probably uh, just take the free pulls on that and get on with your life. Uh, so, we did get another new event, and that is Dimensions and Entropy Tier 10. If you are uh, not having finished Pathos or not near Tier 10, you probably don't need to worry about it. But uh, for those of us like Mino who like to finish it, Mino, have you already finished it? You ha you've had 29 minutes. Uh, uh, then um, uh, he said he was had to work. Like yeah. those burgers aren't going to flip themselves. What's he supposed to do? Yeah, they don't. Well, you flip the burger in one hand and do um, you know the the chaos in the other. Uh, so this is a five wave 
uh, dimensions and chaos fight uh, with uh, looking at the Tom Barry Troop. You can go to TomBarryTroop.com. Uh, we haven't shouted out their website. They have an overview uh, that I believe Vane works on these. And then Black Cloud, they have a link to Black Cloud's video where he talks about that. Our friend Black Cloud, Black Nero uh, on YouTube. Uh, he has a video, so you can check both of those resources at TomBarryTroop.com. But there's five waves. They uh, do deadly attacks, both single target and AOE. They self-buff, all the enemies self-buff, um, and they have debuffs as well. Um, and there is a fight, fire, ice, and wind uh, resist down So uh, on these bosses as well. Uh, so the first wave is just a simple mini dragon wave. Not too much to write home about. The second wave is two hill wyverns, uh, which are fire resistant and wind weak. Uh, their debuffs are not really uh, big, uh, but they can push off your buffs. So watch that out. Um, break them uh, or you will uh, receive a uh, real bad uh, attack there as they boost themselves and do big damage. Uh, that is a, a two wave boss. Wave three is uh, enemies we fought in a lot. A holy dragon, which is weak to dark damage, and a skull dragon soul, which is ice and holy weak. Um, yeah, the, these are, we've fought these all again. They cleanse debuffs. The holy dragon can cleanse all his debuffs. Um, they do a mixture of strong attacks. Um, the dispel helps because they can hit real, real hard. Um, might be worth uh, considering summoning in that wave, they say. Uh, then we have Osteoveus. The uh, Wave 4 boss, um, who's the undead version of this uh, single target dragon. Remember, he's the undead version of the one thing. Um, opens with End Ball, a hard hitting AoE Brave plus HP attack that inflicts several debuffs. So you just get that right from the beginning. Uh, does various debuffs beyond that. Um, it, he gets a high turn rate when he breaks you, so make sure you don't get broken. Uh, delaying him is probably the best way to deal with him. Um, damage mitigation from other characters would be good. Um, he does a lot of debuffs, attack, defense, eye brave, uh, fire resistance, ice resistance, wind resistance. Uh, and then the final wave, as if that wasn't, this sounds awful, this is a terrible fight, uh, is Dark Bahamut, uh, who of course opens with an AoE brave plus HP mega flare. And uh, if he breaks you, you will probably be dead. So uh, again, you can delay him if you have your single target to layers um, and uh, make sure he um, yeah, uh, dies quickly. At certain HP thresholds, it will apply buffs to itself. Um, following any summon, it counters with cure and mega flare. So summon on another wave or make sure you kill it if you summon. So uh, don't, don't summon on that wave and then you know feel like you uh, are going to win and then don't win and he heals. So uh, the suggestions from our friends, the Tomberry Troop, of course, were Hope for damage mitigation and Leo for um, uh, damage per turn and also the delays. Of course, Arnea, Vayne, Lightning, Jack, who's coming up, Caius, Fran for debuffs, Porum, Snow for tank and damage mitigation. They if have a... you're waiting for damage mitigation and you want to use Snow, you might want to wait until the last yeah. chapter with Sync later this month where he gets a rework. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. You, this. Um, this. Try not to bring snow right don't, now. Don't. Don't bring snow right now and expect that. Yeah. This is fully realized snow. Uh, and you can just check on. I. I really like that they've done this. They've compiled this. Um, they have all kinds of sample teams on the bottom of their infographics. So check out those sample teams. Uh, I think I'm gonna try Hope, Leo, and Shadow. Uh, I think that may be my team going into it. Uh, at this point, we'll see. Um, I also have lightning in there to to play around with. I have a whole bunch of characters to play around with, but I think that might be my team going into it. So um, good. Yes, it's Cinque. Cinque J. A. Uh, it's Snow and Cinque. Uh, Cinqua? It's sink. Yes, Sink. Yes, I am guarantee that's how you pronounce it. So good luck to all of you. Five. We will have, or just five. Uh, we will have. Sink is also an appropriate one because it is French, yeah. In the kitchen sink, uh, and that's what she does. She throws everything and the kitchen sink at you with her uh, with her attacks. That's that's her old gimmick. Uh, so we'll get back to you next week on Dimensions and Tier 10. Uh, Mino and I will have beaten it, I'm sure, by then, and uh, can tell you what we did and have a little bit more experience with <laughs> the fight. So, Crease, 
Were there any questions that you wanted to address today in today's show? Well, Drew Zane is here on the podcast questions. Uh, While well, Chris is looking those up, you can go on to our Discord. Join our Discord. TCCpodcast.com has the links to all of our social media and our Discord. Uh, feel free um, to jump on our Discord. We have a great community there. And you can post questions for the podcast in the podcast questions channel. Uh, and so are there any questions for us to discuss there are Tonight. some questions. So we'll start with yeah. Eon's question that she posted as we were recording last oh. week, and this one slipped through the cracks. Do any of the co-hosts today have a favorite or least favorite episode from all 100? Oh, um, my least favorite episode was the, the missing episode that uh, I wasn't on um, <laughs> and didn't get recorded. <laughs> Um, and, uh, I, I forget what episode that was, but there, there's an episode that Chris and Mino, um, did by themselves and, uh, it didn't get recorded. And so, uh, that's my least favorite episode cause I didn't get to hear it. So yeah. Episode hundred was a lot of fun. So just don't listen to the episode where I say that, um, Titus, uh, 35 is overrated. I regret that. <laughs> was it on the podcast that you were saying that um, Jack was FFT or was that your poll thing? Oh, hey, no, that didn't happen on the podcast. Okay. That was, <laughs> that, that, that's not even on, you can't, that's not even on the internet right now because I re-recorded that. <laughs> that was on, <laughs> on, that was on the first version of the um, Should You Pull for May. <laughs> yeah, now that I. Know, no one re-uploaded that. Oh, somebody, yeah, so, somebody, somebody downloaded that and kept it. I'm, I'll wait for that episode 200. Uh, that can come back, yeah. So yeah, when I when I said Jack was from Tactics like four times in a row, I don't. Well, Rams is on the banner, so I was just you know thinking. <laughs> my 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 mouth goes ahead of my mind often. So yeah, the internet never forgets eight thirteen. Thank you. Um, but it's not you can't find it. So Chris, did you have did you have any uh, thoughts on that? <laughs> My least favorite episode was actually a recent episode, and I think it came off with how frustrated I was during it. The Roses of May episode, episode 97. Uh, just because we had so much to cover and we took so long to get through it all. Um, my favorite episode, however, was the first one I was on the podcast where I was just a special guest at the time. And I don't remember what number it was any, at this point anymore, but it always will hold a special place in my part, uh, heart because it was where I was first brought into this circle yeah probably around 50 right 50 60 somewhere in there maybe a little bit earlier than that but yeah you've been with I can't us for remember a while the exact episode number anymore yeah. yeah all right well thank you what other questions do we have drew zane do you have a favorite episode <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't spot. know the number <laughs> and also like i just listened to these uh sorry i had a specific one Episode forty-seven. Is my no, favorite. no. The least favorite one is when you guys shit on Porum. Yeah, and then I, yeah. I you just to get to on, that. on here to say no. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Or was it your okay. favorite because it encouraged you to come on the show? So I'm just saying. Sure, but making lemons out of uh, lemonade or the other way around. Yeah, that's a good trick. Uh, next episode is <laughs> from Goose Slug. How do you count off your multi pull? So how do you count off your orbs in each multi pull? Uh, do you count from up from like one to 11? Do you count down from 11 to 10? Do you don't count at all? Do you just watch them go through or do you skip it all together? Mark. Uh, I, I count, I count up if I'm streaming, especially, um, I will count up, right? So one, two, three, shift, four, five, six, shift, seven, eight, nine. That would be nice. If it was seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. But yeah, so yeah, I, I count up, I guess. It's an interesting question. I never really thought about it. you're saying what do you do oh um first of all i actually hate gasha and uh gambling so um it's really stressful for me i just do the multi thing and i turn my head away and kind of use you, you can't see it because i'm holding my hands up but i just listen and watch and listen to the uh like i have my hands out and i just do like uh one two three four and and when I hear the the switch to gold, that's when I start looking. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I don't know. And I just skip them all together. I just look at what the list is at the end. I don't let it roll out. 
Hmm. Different strokes for different folks. Thanks for the question. Next one. The next question comes from Zeno. If you plan to pity a character's weapon on a banner, is it a waste to use tickets first to see if you get lucky? As you already plan to run through the full 75k gems minimum, is it worth using extra resources on the chance you could get it early? Or should you use those tickets for another banner for when you haven't decided on pity pulls at all? I will answer this first. So, Zeno, my answer is never mix. If you know you're going to pity this banner, do not waste tickets on it because all that's going to do is just build yourself up for disappointment where you're going to spend resources on tickets, you're going to spend resources on gems, and in the worst case scenario, which has happened to me a couple of times, and I think it's happened to Mark a couple of times, it's happened to other people who've been on the show a couple of times, you feel worse for it at the end if you end up – sorry, Rasphony, I don't mean to make you feel attacked because it totally is not just you. All of us, I think, have done this at one point or another at least once. Um, but yeah, it's – it can hurt you more than it can help you in many cases. You might end up lucky and you might end up spending tickets and get it early, or you might just end up wasting tickets and then wasting the same amount of gems. So if you know you really want it, you have the gems to, in your reserve, you know you want to spend them, you're going to spend them anyways, just go for the gems right away. If you're on like the fence and you're like, eh, I don't really care about this character, I really like him, but I don't care that much, then feel free to spend the tickets. But if you know you're going to pity them regardless, just go for the pity. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of mixing resources if you don't have to. I've said that plenty of times. If I really want, I mean, it's changed recently because of my ticket situation. But uh, if I really want a EX weapon, I will go full gems. Um, if I can live without it, I'll go 200 tickets. I will not surpass at this point anymore. I will not go over 200 tickets. Uh, I just spent 200 tickets on Rem. Uh, didn't get her. Uh, I didn't have Fang or Rem. And actually, I needed 15s and 35s on that banner too. Uh, so it was actually a great banner for me to pull on. But um, didn't get it either at EX and you know walked away no problem, not thinking anything about it. Um, you know, it, It's going to be hard given... Uh, I, I have limited the number of gem pulls that I'm going to do here for the rest of uh, Chaos. So, you know, I'd really like hope, but uh, I'm going to ticket him. And if I don't get him in 200 tickets, I'm going to walk away. Uh, end of story. Uh, and I'll live without him. Uh, but um, and, and the the only time I've ever considered mixing was on this Lightning Banner, Lightning Hope, Shadow. Um, I had so many tickets. Uh, I've been capped at tickets. I've got several. Uh, at that point, I probably had 1,500 tickets. Um, so I was going to spend 200 tickets and if I didn't get it, then, um, I was going to go gems, but, uh, that's just cause I was capping on tickets, um, and needed to spend some tickets and it was a good banner to spend tickets on. I got all three EXs on under 200 tickets, so I didn't have to go into gems, thankfully, but that's my strategy. If you really want it, gems, um, if you can live without it, but would like it 200 tickets. If you uh, just like to spend tickets, 13 Ticket Challenge. That's why we designed that. Drew Zane, what's your poll strategy? Um, you know what? I'm going to give a slightly different answer because um, as a person who doesn't, uh, who's a free-to-play, I have to make a lot of sacrifices in my polls. And so one of the things that I do, and I hope, and the reason I'm saying this is because I think this is a good thing to adopt, is... Whenever a new month comes by, what I do is, okay, what are the three banners that I like? The three banners, and only three. No other th banners but three. Okay, three? I found the three. Drop one of them, because I'm only taking two. Um, unless there's a specific month that has um, a lot that, ha that I'm looking for, specifically April had like six that I wanted and got because I was planning for it. But what I'm going to say here is that I've gotten, I've been able to have a lot of resources by just being able to pick three and then drop one. So that's what I'll say there. Yeah, that's not a bad plan considering, you know, we're averaging uh, a little bit over 75,000 gems. Um, 
let me look specifically how, how we've gotten here. Uh, the last, uh, what do you want to do? The last uh, six months. The last six months, we've averaged 85,000 gems. So that's with some, all the summon boards and everything else. And that is not paid. That's free free gems. Um, so if you're like, where have all my gems gone? Well, um, I don't know. I keep track of all of it. I can tell you where all my gems have gone. Uh, but uh, these are confirmed numbers. I always uh, check them with... Um, uh, Oh, I, I forget his name. Uh, it starts with a V on Reddit, who always does those numbers. But uh, yeah, we, we've been averaging over 80,000 gems a month when summoning boards. Uh, we've been averaging well over 250 tickets. Um, it can be several hundred tickets now with a summoning board. Uh, yeah, so I mean, if you say I'm, I'm going to pity one banner and spend 300 gems on another banner, yeah, that's not a bad strategy. Uh, yeah, so... I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but I'm saying that's an option, you know. Yeah, I've no, um, had several months recently where I was very gem heavy, and there were several months where I had to pity the EX I was looking for. So I've kind of swung in the other direction where I'm being much more conservative with my gems now. Yeah, retro gamer dad. The uh, the thing Drew Zane was talking about is his plan is he looks at the upcoming banners for the month picks three banners that he likes and then drops one and pulls on those remaining two. Is that correct, Jose? That's generally what I go for, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't always work out. Sometimes you uh, pull on Karen and, and purple her. Um, sometimes you purple <laughs> Extra. Karen um, and him? Yeah, uh, well, either way. Uh, I, I, don't, I feel like that race is fairly gender fluid, so um, don't box them. Isn't uh, that the human <laughs> insert race? It is. And humans are gender fluid. That's my point. This is your fair enough, fair enough. Here, this is your philosophical um, part of the podcast. Yeah, are there any other questions? <laughs> the last question we're going to be answering this week because the last couple of questions, one we already talked about, it was the Gigantar token thing. And the second one is Amino-specific question. So Tass asked a question, what Final Fantasy would you say has oh, the most balanced question. and powerful roster out of the Final Fantasies currently represented in game? Didn't I ask that like three months ago? You did, and apparently <laughs> we're re-asking it because no one has a memory that lasts longer than a goldfish. It, it is a great question, kind of to bring up throughout the different Final Fantasy tactics. No, that's that's terrible. Um, it is a good question. I was gonna. I, I didn't have time to go through. I, I've been working, but. Um, uh, to kind of look through and see if you take each series just today, I mean, you can look forward. <clears throat> I, I mean, if you look if you look right now and looking forward in Japan, I think the the powerhouse series is Final Fantasy 15. Um, Final Fantasy 15 right now has Aranea, has a good support in Ignis. Um, there, you're going to get Prompto coming up. Um, you're going to get um, Noctis with his burst, Arden with his burst. Uh, they're, I mean, they're just all Gladio is, is just amazingly powerful. So, you know, in, in, the, in the timeline in Japan, Final Fantasy 15 is just chuck full of power. How about right now? But yeah, if you look right now, I, you know, I was trying to think of, okay, so if you, you know, if you, if you consolidate them down to, you know, what series have a good support healer, have a, you know, have a tank or good utility characters, have AOE or have magic damage, have physical damage. Um, there, there's quite a few that do really have a, a good number of uh, kind of a roster. You know, Final Fantasy, uh, well, really, I mean, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sucks for some reason. I, I, I just even realized a walking through ten. Ten really blows. The the characters Eleven have, has a kind of a yeah. mishmash yeah. roster, too. It doesn't have any tanks. It doesn't... Yeah really have any supports other than Lilith said, yeah. but she can't heal the party. But 12, 13, I think this month, if you wanted to pick this month <clears throat> in DFFO, Final Fantasy 13 takes the cake, right? Um, Lightning, Hope, Caius, Noel, Snow. That's just this month. That's also um, because they have so many reworked <clears throat> slash right. new EX realizations. Oh, right, exactly. That. So it might be a little biased towards them yeah. that they're so strong. I think yeah. FF7 has more frequently had a very balanced roster. The only thing they're really lacking is a tank, but they've always had strong supports, strong yeah. healers. 
uh, strong damage units, strong utility units in like UFE and such. But yeah, I mean, I I think right now Final Fantasy thirteen kind of is the the overall. Um, they you know, have I'm, Zach, yes, but he is yeah. one unit. Yeah. And yes, he That's is good. a very strong tank. I'm trying to think of a more balanced roster. And yeah. Zank and Zach, sorry, is the only tank for that team. And he's very specific in what he does. And I think Final Fantasy, similar to 13, I mean, because 13 doesn't have the most characters, Final Fantasy V has a pretty good, diverse roster for the limited number of characters they have. Uh, you have physical Five damage, magic damage, you have, you know, tanks, support. You know, all kinds of different things. Debuffs, dispel. Yeah. Oh, 13's got Vanille too. Jeez. Yeah, 13 yeah, five, is. Five, Ooh. five was the one I was going to go for too. Like, that is one that has a bunch of characters that are very, very um, good at their uh, specific role. Um, where a lot of, a lot of them, a lot of other versions of the games just don't quite have a lot of co role coverage. Um, six used to be pretty bad, but six actually has Leo now, so at yep. least you have that. And um, Shadow. Six kind of swings. Yep. It has some bad times and some yep. really good times in its roster, where sometimes the roster is really good and sometimes it's just garbage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, right now, what is it? Cyan is one of the worst characters in the game, and he still sits in the six roster. <laughs> That isn't saying much because there's still Cater and Sass as some of the worst characters on the roster, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, otherwise, eight's still uh, pretty decent, but who knows? I think I the think... only thing eight's missing is like a super solid healer, and Irving kind of fills that role. Irving and Selfie both heal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Neither of them does it amazing, at least in my experience, but they do do it. Renoa heals herself. <laughs> yeah, she, uh, she's got some decent uh, 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 regen. So yeah, and sure. eight eight will get additional boosts here in the next few months. So uh, and yeah, cipher yeah. selfie or cipher uh, cipher Rage and Rage fusion, and fusion Rage. are all going to be getting reworks in yep. the future, and those will all bring them up to much better status. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is there is there an would it be easier to say is there an FF that's just you know. Well, actually, we already got that answer. Six, uh, ten is the one. Oh, ten kind is of meh. ten I is mean, so the, bad. It's the ones that don't have decent rosters at all. It's like one, yeah, one, two, three, three, and tactics that have no characters at all. One, two, three, tactics. Um, yeah, we haven't mentioned Type Zero. Uh, type Zero has a huge roster, <laughs> obviously. Um, the thing is, two actually has a decent roster considering what it has. It has a weird mix support unit, uh, offensive support unit with Ethereum. It has a weird offensive healer with Maria. It has uh, Emperor as a pure offensive debuffer. Um, Leon as the tanky oh, unit, yeah, who's yeah, kind yeah. of a weird niche tank type unit. So there are you can actually make actually a team better niches yeah. than other yeah. and than other FFs in many ways. Yeah, you can actually make a team of Final Fantasy two characters, un unlike uh, yeah, tactics. So poor tactics. Why do they hate tactics so much? Uh, but yeah, I I would say pretty pretty much for the month of May, Final Fantasy thirteen is is dominating. Um, everybody's super strong. They've got a huge kind of variety of of uses and abilities. I think the major thing they're missing is magic damage. But I mean. Neil and Hope both do decent magic damage um, for support characters. So, uh, yeah. Any other, was that the last question? That is the last question for this week. Well, Drew Zane, how can we? No, I can tell you. Um, I, I want you to tell us how to get a hold of you or how to check out your stuff. But if you go to TomBerryTroop.com uh, and hmm. check out the. Uh, Porum infographic, you will see a link to Drew Zane's video on how to play Porum. So uh, you can check it right there easily. But how do we get in contact with you? Uh, and uh, how do we check out your stuff, Drew Zane? Um, unfortunately, I'm not like a, right now, I'm not really much of a social media kind of presence. Um, you can find me on Discord, on, Chris, on Crystal Chronicles. And if you want to get in contact with me, you can always give me a DM on Discord. And I also 
have um, I post on Reddit sometimes. So unfortunately, I don't have like a thing to show you. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, that's okay. Uh, so looking ahead, we have the World of Illusion Ultimate Diablos. Uh, on the 12th, we have Sync LC, Sincere Strength with Snow. On the 17th, we have GX event with Ramza on the 21st and the next Squex community stream on Monday, the 25th. Uh, so thank you to Druzane and Kreese. Uh, you can check out everything about us, tccpodcast.com. Uh, join our Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube. Check out the Tom Berry Troops infographics and their entire page now with a whole bunch of new stuff. They're doing a giveaway, uh, hashtag giveaway on the Tom Berry Troop. If you take a little survey uh, and give them your uh, date of birth, your social security. No, it's 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 very inintrusive. Uh, survey monkey kind of survey. Uh, so Tom Berry Troop, uh, TomBerryTroop.com. Uh, check out their surveys to support them. That would be Inkwell, their dreamy Teleute, and Vane Novus. Uh, check out Macknell's website, Macknell from the Call to Arms on Reddit, DecidiaInfo.com. Uh, two of my favorite resources at the moment. Uh, thank you to Chris, Mark, and uh, I'm Mark. But thank you to myself and Chris and Mina. We are the TCC crew. Uh, thank you to our mod team, Erolai, who is Lily on YouTube, Ink Welder from the Tom Bear Troop, J.A, Jin Lee on YouTube, Macknell from the Call to Arms to CityInfo.com, Quetz, who is the founder of MateriaBot, Shara, who is the Don of Reddit, and Strafe, who is also on YouTube. Thank you for Dreamy doing our intro video, Jin Lee doing our backgrounds and emotes, Hate13 for doing our intro narration, and thank, of course, to our founder, Pierre, uh, and check out that little video, uh, Road to 100. Um, and thank you all for being with us. We had a great group here tonight. Until next time, this has been episode 101 of the Crystal Chronicles. Good luck on all your pulls. Good luck on Dimensions and Entropy. And good luck on the TCC Challenge. We'll see you all next Thursday at 8 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Goodbye.